guys what's going on welcome to cereal at midnight my name is Heath this is Captain Tiki and he wanted to sit in for this kiss video because he's a big fan as you can tell he likes Gene Simmons uh, he was actually here's a fun fact he was the captain of multiple kiss cruises uh, that's actually that's a joke Gene Simmons please don't sue it's just a joke uh, but uh, Captain Tiki is a big KISS fan. He had to sit in for this. This video has been a long time coming. Um, this has been requested for a few months. And it just didn't feel like the right time to make that video. And now, the boys are back on the road. It's the KISS farewell tour. They're saying they're done. No more touring. No more recording in the studio. Uh, we will see. But it's the KISS farewell tour. And so now, the tour has kicked off. Uh, people are going to see KISS. I have my tickets. I will be sitting down to watch KISS then standing back up again uh, in about a month. So I'm getting hyped. I'm excited. Now is the time to talk about my KISS collection. And full, full disclosure up front, I'm not like a KISS completionist. I don't have everything. I probably have more than a lot of people. <laughs> okay, but uh, I'm not like a mega super fan. Um, but I do like KISS, so if there's something that's not here, I, I know it's not here. There's some su uh, still some stuff that I need to track down, but uh, let me start you off with my vinyl collection. This is, uh, this is KISS the Originals. This is their first three albums re-released, because like, re the, the original albums themselves kind of hard to find, kind of pricey. This has KISS, self-titled KISS, Harder Than Hell, Dress to Kill. Um, should I take this out? Yeah, I'll slip it out really quick. Uh, it's got, if you can see in the artwork, Kiss is like blowing up in flames. Um, but it's got, uh, this is how it's done. You got three LPs here. Uh, I'll just do the first one. So this is Kiss. It's like they've replicated the artwork. Instead of them each being like a full shiny jacket, they just have the paper sleeves with the artwork of the original album on it. But you know what? That's fine with me. Uh, and if you want to know, this is actually my favorite Kiss record, their first one. It's got so many uh, of the staples on this album. Uh, so many things that would go on to be just like a, a part of their, still a part of their set even now, all these years later. Strutter, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, uh, Deuce, uh, Black Diamond. Like all is like almost the entire album is a staple of a, of a live Kiss show even now. So, um, you know, that happens sometimes with uh, certain live albums will be not out uh, certain certain first albums will be a, a, a band's best because they're the hungriest they have the most to prove i think kiss absolutely felt like they had something to prove destroyer the classic one of the most famous album covers of all time this is like straight out of a comic book Com comic books coming soon um then very similar to that is the cover for love gun so i have love gun on vinyl Good, good copy too. Plays really well. I have the double platinum greatest hits collection. This is a nightmare. <laughs> this is a nightmare for camera work. Then I have Kiss Alive 2. Uh, and it's kind of unfortunate. I don't have, I'll go ahead and tell you, I don't have Kiss Alive 1 at all. I don't have it on CD. I don't have it on vinyl. I don't have it on like futuristic uh, uh, Spotify, whatever. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have Kiss Alive. So, um, that's a, I need to, because that's one of the best. Then let's start with the CDs. I, I bought this box set years ago, and this has um, four albums that are uh, a good, good entry point for Kiss. Uh, it has this Millennium Collection, which I actually really like these Millennium Collections. These are really cheap now too. These are like five bucks or less at most places. But this is like, a, if, if, if you're trying to get into Kiss, this one has a great track listing to get you started. It's got Strutter, Deuce, Harder Than Hell, Come On and Love Me, Rock and Roll All Night, Live, uh, Detroit Rock City, Beth, Hard, Rock, uh, Hard Luck Woman, Calling Dr. Love, Love Gun, Christine 16, I Was Made for Loving You. If you got to do a single disc compilation of Kiss's Greatest Hits, this is not bad. Um, and then we have uh, the first album, Kiss. They skip Hotter, uh, Hotter Than Hell. It's not in that box set, but I have it, so... I'm good. Dress to Kill, Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over, then Love Gun, Double Platinum. Now, this doesn't have the sheen. This doesn't have the uh, the shiny awesomeness of the, the LP version. Um, 
You know what? This is a single disc collection, and this is pretty good too if you want a good entry point. Double Platinum is pretty good. It's got Strutter 78 though, uh, instead of the original Strutter. It's like a reworked Strutter. It's hard hard to go wrong with these songs if you just want. Uh, now, it, the, the caveat being that in, in record form, it's two records, right? But in, um, in CD form, it's just one CD. So, uh, Kiss Dynasty. This is Kiss Goes Disco, which I actually really like. I approve of Disco Kiss. I know that it was like a... I wasn't a huge fan in 1970. Like, I wasn't alive when Kiss went disco. So, for me, no dog in that fight. But I like Disco Kiss. Uh, Kiss Unmasked. Check out Unmasked. <laughs> Check out the... Uh, comic book like artwork uh kiss always big fans of the comic supporters of the comic book gene simmons of course uh, a comic book fan and supporter the much divisive music for the elder. this is picking up all, all kinds of reflections music from the elder um the movie that was never made the uh the saga that never was produced by bob ezrin who was alice cooper's producer bob ezrin one of the super producers of the 70s um i think music from the other is pretty decent i don't i wouldn't put it up there with like the great commercial stuff but i think they wanted to do something different and they did you know what we won't get bogged down in reviews of this stuff we'll keep it moving we'll do reviews in another um another video uh then i skip ahead i skip a bunch of 80s albums and i go straight to crazy nights i know i know i gotta get the other ones i think there's four that i need to get uh what is it lick it up animal eyes uh this is this is madness i should not do this uh and these see i bought some of these used a long time ago and someone has written their name across the top of it c brawner b-r-a-w-n-e-r c brawner so he did not want anybody to take his kiss collection uh check out paul you guys pulling his britches off paul what are you doing man this is around the time of the decline of Western Civilization Part 2. Have you guys seen that? I love that documentary. Uh, it's now out on Blu-ray from somebody. Is it Shout? Someone put Decline of Western Civilization 1, 2, and is 3 as well. Um, but 2 is uh, it's great stuff, man. One of my favorites. Um, from the same collection, Mr. Bronner's co or Miss Bronner's collection, uh, Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits which is basically their 80s hits when they were like, we, we never did that whole makeup dressing up thing. We're about the rock, man. We're about like hair metal now. Uh, also from the same Brawner collection is uh, Hot in the Shade. Is this from that? Yep, this one too. Kiss Revenge. Uh, this is not. This is, I bought this. Kiss Alive Trace. So I have two and three, but I don't have one. It's kind of messed up, right? Carnival of Souls, which has um, is Carnival of Souls, the final sessions. Uh, there's a jungle, the song Jungle. It's a Paul song. I've made it through this entire video without doing a Paul Stanley impression. How did that happen? It's a song called Jungle. Let me tell you something, people. I wrote a song called Jungle. I'm going to sing it for you tonight if you stand up and clap your hands. He's got a little bit of a lisp thing. Have you guys ever noticed that? Let me tell you something, people. All right, now. I sing it. Don't tell me you're going to sing along with it. They don't. <laughs> anyway, Jungle for me is the highlight of this, uh, of this CD. Then back to the makeup years. The Reunited Kiss for one album. Um, Kiss back together with Ace and Peter. This has, let's see if this will pick up. Whoa, man. Hey, man. It's like, whoa, man. It's like it's a clown, man. He's like coming straight for me. It's like a super creepy funhouse, man. <laughs> what is that voice? Uh, then the, I believe this was a Walmart exclusive, right? Sonic Boom. And this has uh, Modern Day Delilah. Great song. Uh, I gotta say, Modern Kiss, like New Era Kiss, when they write new material. Now, the new being... 10 years ago uh it sounds so good like i think they sound as good as they ever have maybe better than two-thirds of their career like modern kiss is really working for me um but this had a uh second disc of re-recorded what do they call it oh we got kiss classics hold up now hold up now <laughs> we have sonic boom so it's a three disc set we have sonic boom 
we have Kiss Classics, which I believe are all re-recorded versions of classic Kiss songs, probably so they didn't have to give Peter and Ace royalties. I'm not sure exactly 100% what the reasoning behind that was, but I think that's probably it. Um, and then uh, Live in Buenos Aires. Is that a CD or a DVD? It's a DVD. A bonus DVD, Live in Buenos Aires. And then finally, actually not finally, uh, Kiss Monster. You guys, Monster is probably... Uh, I love Monster. I think it's a solid, solid album. So many good songs on here. Hell or Hallelujah. Uh, they play that in their concert now. It's such a good song. Um, Freak, Wall of Sound. Back to the Stone Age. Eh, I don't really... Shout Mercy, Long Way Down, mm, The Devil Is Me, All For The Love Of Rock And Roll, Take Me Down Below is like the filthiest song but it's so ridiculous and cheesy. Like, it's, it's like it, just the sheer chutzpah of that song kind of makes me happy. Uh, and then Last Chance. You guys, this is a great album. Uh, produced by... Produced by Paul Stanley. I produced it. Okay, people. I lost it. Uh, one more thing that's kind of a CD, and it's also a Blu-ray. This moves us into another area of my Kiss collection. This is Kiss Rocks Vegas. There's actually a review for this at SerialAtMidnight.com. Uh, this is from their Las Vegas residency um, from circa two, uh, 2014, I believe. And so we've got uh, a CD. Let's see if I can whip that around. We got a CD and then a, uh, a Blu-ray of their, um, their stuff here. And they do some acoustic numbers, like in the uh, like in the lobby of this place. They, there's like a full live Vegas concert uh, set list, and then some acoustic stuff. And uh, I just it's real. I like I, I like Kiss acoustic. I don't have Kiss unplugged. I know I need it. It's one of those that I need. But um, like it's just like I like Kiss acoustic. They have a a good band can sound good plugged in or acoustic. And Kiss sounds just as good acoustic. I mean, different, but they're, they're very talented musicians. Um, so that leads us to the visual aspect of this collection. I don't have a ton of their direct to VHS, like they did VHS releases. Um, like, was it like Kiss uh, Uncensored? I can't remember the name of it now, but they did some VHS releases back in the day, but I don't have any of those. I do have Kissology, Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. I wonder if they'll put out a 4. Now that they're officially, you know, done. Or so they say. Uh, and the perk of, uh, of each Kissology, if you don't know about the Kissologies, they were kind of like Beatles anthologies, but a visual record of, uh, of Kiss. So like live shows that they did, things that were recorded uh, professionally for television broadcasts, things like that. They're, uh, the Kiss Meets the Phantom in the Park TV special that was produced by Hanna-Barbera, which uh, Kiss was always a cartoon character. And then, like, yeah, Hanna-Barbera is the natural... I know they hated it, but it's like, yeah, you guys are cartoon characters. That's actually a perfect fit. Hanna-Barbera doing a special about Kiss. So that's, that's my three volumes of Kissology. We're almost done with visual stuff, but I would be remiss if I did not remind you guys how much I love... Scooby-Doo meets Kiss. Well, they just call it Scooby-Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery. Get a good look at that, you guys. It is Hanna-Barbera, Scooby-Doo. Uh, I love this so much. And it features an original song at the end sung by, well, sung by the boys. And I believe it's called Don't Touch My Ascot. And it's just like a, a 50s throwback doo-wop kind of a song. And it could very well be that that is the last Kiss song that, that ever gets recorded. Because they say they're done. They, they're all like pushing 70 or they are 70 or whatever. They're getting up there. And I don't know how many albums they have in their, in their future. They say they're done. It could very well be that the song about an ascot, like Fred's ascot, is the last recorded Kiss song. So hey, historical, historical relevance, you guys. You kind of have to pick it up. But seriously, it's super fun. It's a fun, uh, like it takes place in a carnival, a la Phantom in the Park. And uh, they frequently stop for Kiss musical breaks. And there's like, uh, there's one of uh, I Was Made for Loving You. And it's like super trippy visuals. And it's like psychedelic. It's, it's fantastic. Um, okay, we are almost done. Books. 
I have uh, Kiss Behind the Mask. Uh, kind of a it's an authorized biography. It's still kind of kind of uh, sorted is not the right word. It's still kind of blunt and honest. Um, now, when they do these authorized biographies, uh, I think that uh, Peter, Peter, Chris, and Ace Fraley would say, "Well, they didn't talk to me about it. They, they did. They, they twisted the story. Gene and Paul twisted the story. So take it for what it's worth. But this is an authorized biography done with the full cooperation of Gene and Paul, as is nothing to lose. The story of Kiss." Uh, on the making of Kiss, 1972 to 1975. This is kind of how the band formed, uh, like what led them to uh, the whole thing. And you know what? I'm looking at this book. I've read it. I, I think I need to reread it again, especially since I'm like ramping up, ramping up for, uh, <laughs> ramping up for this Kiss concert. And then now might be the time to re revisit it. And then I have the Kiss compendium. Now I don't have the slipcase. I purchased this. Sans slipcase. I wish that I did. If anybody has just a loose Kiss Compendium slipcase out there, uh, let me know. But this is like 1,200 and something pages of Kiss comics. And boy, is it heavy. Uh, Marvel omnibuses got nothing on the Kiss Compendium. I'm trying to find like a good Kiss splash page to show you guys. But uh, here we go. Oh, geez. Ugh. It's a good, it's a good page. So I'll read you the table of contents, uh, or you know I won't do the whole table of contents, but I'll read you basically what's in here. So we've got the first appearance. It's actually not their first appearance. They did like a Howard the Duck thing. I don't think that's in here. But uh, the Kiss Super Special number one, and then Kiss Super Special number five. Both of the, the like Marvel, Marvel comics like Marvel special issues. Uh, those are their two first main comics. That's the ones like Kiss Super Special number one, I believe, is the one that had the blood of the band in the ink. It's like a whole thing. Uh, Kissery comic, and then the Todd McFarlane Image Psycho Circus run. There's like a whole bunch of those. And then uh, 13 issues from the Dark Horse run. So um, I think there's more. I don't think that's everything, but I think that's most of it. Uh, most of their comics work. And then... You guys who've been hanging out on the channel for a while know about this. I have my Star Child, uh, my Kiss Mego figure from the second run of Mego. Still haven't been able to find the demon. Uh, I would love to complete at least the main two guys. I have no idea if there's plans to do like the uh, you know the Space Ace or the Cat or anything like that. I guess the licensing. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on with that. But uh, I would love to at least have the demon. Um, but uh, that's it. That's my, I believe that's my entire Kiss collection. So again, uh, more than some, not nearly as much as some people have. But uh, I do love Kiss and I'm so excited to see them live on stage as part of their farewell tour. Um, so you guys going to see Kiss farewell? You got your tickets? Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know about uh, what, what you think about the collection, what you think is worth picking up that I don't already have. You know, let's just talk some Kiss. Uh, you wanted the best, you got the best. Kiss. So guys, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for talking about Kiss. I appreciate you. Until next time, I will catch you later.